I'm going to go into the manual testing, so to say. So giving you a brief overview of manual testing and what you need to do um, if you are planning or you don't know anything about software testing and you want to go into that. All right, so now let's start with what exactly is software testing? What is testing? What exactly is testing? And why do you need to test? Um, more often, I used to start this discussion by saying everybody does testing. Everybody does testing. And in fact, the first thing that you do early in the morning is testing. What do I mean? When you wake up in the morning, what do you do? You open your eyes, right? Or you stretch your arm. You for instance, if you open your eyes and you couldn't see anything, so basically, <laughs> you know there's a, there's issue. What you do? Maybe you have to call nine nine nine, or you call one one one, whether it's three three three, wherever you are, or it's seven seven seven, and anything. But you have what you you are trying to do is to raise a book. You know, you raise an alert basically. So testing is very important. So because in your mind, you have a requirement. When you open your eyes, this is where my eyes should look like, basically. And when it doesn't see what it should see, then it's now there's, it doesn't meet the requirement, it doesn't satisfy the requirement that you, you, you already set, basically. For instance, you try to raise your hand, it doesn't do anything. So basically, that is a bug. There's a defect in the operation. But, and also, I tell people, right, even if you wake, if you sleep, right, and you wake up, and you open your eyes, and your eyes could see, and that doesn't mean that there's no defect. Because defect also could be in the environment. Let's say you open um, your eyes, and you discover that you are in Texas. And last night you slept in London. <laughs> what will you do? You, you, do you think you say, eh, all, is, all is good? No, you won't do that actually. You raise a book to say, what happened? Um, I don't remember traveling to Texas in the US. I was in London the last time I, was, I, I slept. So even though your eyes can see, well, your environment has changed and it's changed to a different thing. So in that regard, so testing is basically like a process, right? That consists of different things, right? So it consists of static and dynamic. Static means that there's something that doesn't change, and dynamic means the other thing that will change, right? And it also includes planning, preparation. You don't just sit down and say, okay, yeah, yeah uh, after I want to test. Another thing I also want to say in terms of testing, in terms of what we do, right? Um, I also want to say most of us we use mobile um, phones actually, and um, I've not seen anyone that buy actually buys a phone and say the first thing he's going to say is like okay this is the phone and let me quickly send an email quickly or let me quickly call. You don't normally do that. You look at the phone, you try to browse through the phone, you confirm that is the right one. But basically, that's another form of testing that you're actually doing. Even and you you could call it like a user acceptance testing. Because for instance, if you order a let's say iPhone for, iPhone for instance, and they brought a Nokia for you, or even if it's a Nokia, not a stream, let's say even if it's a, you know, a Samsung phone, or that is a defect, right? You you even though unconsciously you are not doing testing but actually you are also doing testing because the first thing you look into you look at that particular phone you confirm that's the right spec you confirm that's the right model you confirm that it is working you turn it on it is fine you are actually checking that everything is fine even if you are not even looking at the manual to actually go through what that phone should do but technically, what you are doing is testing. So basically, you are trying to satisfy that that particular phone is fit for purpose. And also, it meets your requirements. The only issue that comes now 
you are kind of an adopt tester. Basically, you are not following the process. You are not following, you are not doing evaluation. So this is what this particular course is going to do for you. It's going to move you from being an adopt text tester to a professional tester. So now, when you want to test, you follow process. You follow the process that you want to be able to check if something is okay or not. So like I said, why do you even need to test? Why do you need testing? I've mentioned this before. One is basically just you want to be sure everything is fine. Just check everything is okay. You want to be sure that there's no fault of someone, there's no flaw, there's no mistakes. Everything is working according to how it should work, basically. You know when I said about you testing uh early in the morning, the first thing you do early in the morning, is that when you open your eyes, it's the first thing you do, right? Or you raise your hand, you are also checking that everything is perfectly fine. And so if you already have a requirement at the back of your mind on how it should work, and then you are checking it based on that requirement. That's your basis of your testing. So when you talk about requirement, when you talk about test basis, when you talk about um, planning, so you need to come to that realization that there will be process for you to follow henceforth when you are doing your testing. And this is the purpose of this particular um, course. So, and also when we mention software, what do we mean actually? Because I need to really emphasize that. So it also means your program process, also means your data and documentation, anything, any or the operation that you perform, in on in a computer system that's what we're talking about so uh, as a software tester you're going to be testing the program you're going to be testing the process you're going to be testing the data you're going to be testing the operation you're going to be testing the documentation so that is it's kind of comprehensive basically so you're going to be testing. so that's what you are going to become a software tester then yeah so I said testing is a process basically. It's not a single activity. So it's actually like it's got a life cycle. So and uh, one of the reasons why you do testing is to be able to establish uh, or prevent defect from being introduced into your code. That code will be yeah, uh, maybe your the software that you're actually testing. So basically you verify that the test basis, I've mentioned test basis in the last one, basically it could be like your test basis could be your requirement, your design specification, that particular thing at the back of your mind that has got the diagram of how your operation should work. For instance, now when I talk about like when you wake up in the morning, so you have, at the, you have a requirement at the back of your mind to see this is how my eyes should work. For even if you look at in literary mean in literary way, right? Even if you are using glasses, right, and you wake up something and you didn't put your glasses and everything seems to be fine and you got twenty twenty vision, you will see raise the bug actually <laughs> because this is not normal for you, basically. That as you can see that. So it's basically you have a requirement that you're going to be test you know, used as a test basis, basically. So that is what you're going to use to confirm if your application differs from what the requirement uh, is saying. So that's what you can, basically, that's what testing is. You have a requirement, you have the application. Your role is to confirm that the application meets the requirement. You open the requirement, the requirement, and the requirement said, uh, when I enter A, I should see A. You go to the application, you open the application, you enter A, and you see A, that is a check. So you go to the next one. When I enter B, as you see B, open the application. You enter B, um, but you do not see B, you see C. Then what do you do? That's, that's not right, actually. So that one is a bug because there's a difference in what the requirement says and what the application is doing. So then you raise a bug. So what is a bug? We're going to talk about bugs and defects in the Later slide. Now, instances of failures. So you have different type of um, failures that have happened in the time past. Some of them you are familiar uh, with. So, but let's look at Bloomberg terminals in London that crashed and the, which affected even like 
almost 300,000 traders on the financial markets. So that actually forced the government to postpone like 3 billion pounds in debts, so which is a huge loss to the government actually. So for instance, it was actually because there's a bug in the system because of technical glitch of box signs actually. And there are other issues even with Starbucks, with Amazon, and even with, you know, even if you go back to 1996, even about where there's a bug in the banking, assist, uh, banking account of some customers in the US that you start to credit them. You know, yeah, that would be bonanza for everyone at a particular time, to be honest. So when you're just being credited, by your bank without having to <laughs> do anything. So, but this is the reason why we you need a tester so that you can be able to prevent as much as possible those bugs from going live, basically. And I even read one this afternoon. I didn't actually put this in the slide. So there's accounts even of even post office in the UK also. Uh, they are actually there's a fault in their operations, so I think they just you know, finished the uh, the court case. Actually, I think they find them like billions or something. Like that. Not not even fine. I think they are actually returning the money back to the operators of the post office, basically. So because there are glitches in their operations, so so that's why you need testers. In some cases, it's not only financial. You know, losses, it could also lead into death, people dying, and we saw even Apollo or something, and also some uh, radiation therapy machine that malfunction and people died. So you can see how it's important to have a system that is fully tested and also uh, without any bug, basically. So that is the purpose of testing. Now, let's talk about these particular features, the, um, these particular definitions, actually. This is one of the definitions that sometimes are very, very contagious, um, contagious in software testing. Some people, what is mystic? What is error? What is defect? What is what, what is failure? So, and I can tell you also, right, these people use these particular terms interwoven, and sometimes it doesn't mean the same thing. So if you are working in a place, you need to use the right terms. Right. So, and also look at the differences between their definitions. They don't mean the same thing. They also they could they mean different things. So so they mean different thing actually. So one thing is mistakes. Every of these particular terms that we have discussed: error, defect, box, failure. They start with a mistake. It could be like John. John is the developer. John just finished um, writing some code and he was about to continue the next one. Then James came and said, John, can we go and have a coffee? So as he was ab about to go, um, maybe Zan pressed the A button and he didn't actually know. He just went. And when John came back to start the code, he just thought, yes, even, yeah, maybe it's end of day. I just checked in the code and that's it. That little mistake would develop right into an error. So and that error, if it's not found, it's been go it, it will be it will be gone into maybe QA environments and QA also they would yeah try to find bug or defect. So but if this bug or defect is not found in a QA environment as a tester, right? Then it goes into live environment. When it goes into a live environment, then it actually causes a failure. So you can see where a mistake or error that someone made actually in the software, right? And it was not discovered by that particular person. It went into development and everything and it's been released to a QA. And if QA actually found that particular flaw, the, it's called a defect at that particular time or a bug and they, they can correct it. But if it's not found, it, then that particular bug is there and it goes into operation. It could make the system to fail. And failure could be in different parts. Of it. it could be like 
oh, there's a typographical error or there's something, or even the system does not even work at all. So it could be in different levels also. So that's how you can see how these things now yeah, gravitate from being a mistake or error, it goes into a defect about, then it goes into failures also. So the cause of defects, so now if you uh, look at defects now, so how do you fix a defect? First thing, there's an um, English adage that says that it's teaching time safe now. This is very, very true for a defect. So if you're able to find a particular bug as early as possible, so it's easy to fix. For instance, so uh, there's, uh, we're going to look into static testing. So static testing is basically looking at the requirements. And there's a requirement that's been done by the BA. There's a requirement that's been done by the BA. And then a tester, you look at that requirement, there's a defect that, okay, that there's an error in the requirement. Basically, let me say it that way. There's an error in the requirement, and you point it out to the BA to say, oh, I think this is not right. And the BA, what exactly does it need to do? It just needs to fix it by either delete or backspace. That is easy. But if that is not found, it goes into development, right? And developer also developed on that wrong requirement. And then it passes to the QA. So if the QA is able to find it, right? And that's why in where it's doing the testing, then it becomes a bit difficult to fix because it has to go back and the requirement has to be fixed. Then also then it has to be built again or designed, then also it comes back to test. So you can see how it's now yeah, more expensive. Uh, even if the tester did not actually find it, it goes into productions and they actually found the bug in productions. So it's kind of more expensive to fix. So you can see the cost of the effect. So that's why it's good for us to um, find the bug as early as possible. That's why there's a notion in the industry that a tester should be employed as soon as possible when the project starts, starts actually. So this is one of the interview questions. So they will they may ask you, when do you think that testing should start? So the answer is testing should start as soon as possible when the application is in the initiation stage. So when you're trying to write the requirement, test, testing already started because you can also test that requirement to be sure that it actually fits the purpose. So the rules of testing in development, so I won't actually do a much on this, so I think I've already covered this uh, in, in my last discussions.